Good morning. Good Happy morning. Sunday. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Greg? I'm doing fine. I'm sporting some new uh, wiki wear. I've got a oh, hood. Oh, look at this. I've wow. Got a Wait, and show the design. Nice. The design and is in Enjoy Genealogy? Yeah, Enjoy Genealogy. Where is it? On this side here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. I could be like the blue arrow. <laughs> I mean, the hoodie really is good elf wear. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Very appropriate. Yeah, but it's not too heavy. So I, sh I shouldn't, hopefully I won't be sweating by the end of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I could have worn my red t-shirt like you've got. My, um, right. but well, I'll I, be... I missed the memo last week, so I'm making up for it. There we go. There we go. Well, I thought I would, I would don something slightly different. And then yeah. in two hours when we have our... Uh, fifth day of Elfmas, then I will switch to the my red wear, my elf wear. <laughs> but um, so you'll notice there's only two of us this morning. Um, Our dear friend Megs, yeah, yeah, she's sick. She's not doing well. So uh, hopefully she'll be better uh, soon, and then we'll have her back, yeah. uh, so she can join us next week um, when the roundup is sort of preempted by the Secret Santa final reveal. The yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, it'll be fun. So we've had a great, um, a great first week of the whole challenge. We've had uh, a number of of wishes have been solved, and we are profiling each of those in the twelve days of Elfmas, which has been happening. Little videos that happen. So today's will ha ha happens at twelve noon. Many of them are at twelve noon, but some of them we've had to uh, move around to different times because we're inviting the WikiTree elves who solve. To come and explain their, you know, and share it with the mm -hmm. the wishy, and in some cases, the wishy have been has been able to join us as well. So, it's very. We've got two elves coming up, uh, sharing at twelve noon, um, and uh, so it'll be fun. I, fun. I've loved on the ones I've watched. I've loved the opportunity to get a deeper look at what went into solving the wish. That's yeah. Been yeah, and that's a huge thanks to our, our first elf, Margaret. Um, Margaret Tull Meredith um, was the first elf uh, for the first wish that we chose. And she says, well, I kind of like to explain the methodology and how I went about doing it. Yeah. Um, and I should say biscuits because she's from Appalachia. <laughs> <Biscuit>. <laughs> and um, and so she's and she did that. And it was wonderful. It was very fascinating. Yeah. Um, and I wish I'd, I was fast enough to click on this, you know, to follow what she had done and show the different sites that she was mentioning. And whatnot. But you should watch it. But she explained it very well. Mm -hmm. um, and we sort of took that theme and ran with it. And so yeah. now every elf is sort of explaining how they got there. And um, mm -hmm. very neat. Yeah. But so. Um, Anyways, welcome. There's lots of people. We've got 25 people in the chat. Oh, so far. yay. Thanks yeah, for hanging out with us. Mohavlin, D. How are you? Mary Sleppy. Uh, Brian, how are you doing? Susie Carta. Hillary from Wales. Judy. Lisa. Lisa's one of the elves you'll see later. Hey, Lisa. Um, <laughs> uh, good time zone. And Victor, how are you doing there? A little frosty, he says. Vicky from Chile. Hey, Vicky. Uh, Azure. Good to see you. Hey, Azure. Azure. Yeah. Um, Marie is here, Yoke is here, and who else? Denise, hi there, Denise. Uh, Murray is here, and Mary. I think, uh, yes, Judy is an <laughs> Yeah, we actually have lots, lots of elves are here. That's good. So and I hope uh, all you elves come and join us again for our elf cast at 12 noon. Give the video a like, Azure yes. says, and a huge welcome to all of you who are watching this after the fact. We're glad that you're here as well. Indeed. Absolutely. So, um, so we're we're switching things up a little bit because we're missing Megs, and um, we kind of have to get caught up on what she would normally do. Yes. But <laughs> we're still going to cover everything. We're still going to uh, cover everything. But anyways, but gonna, away, Betsy. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start with photo of the week and tip of the week, which have become one for today, <laughs> because there were no new photos of the week um, for our last week of the theme favorite photo. And But I happened to get together with um, some distant cousins uh, two days ago. Um, my second cousin, who I met for the first time, and I had I had already known his daughter, and so we kept saying, "Oh, you know, you got to meet my parents," and uh, you know, so we finally made it happen, and they are on my mother's side um, through a sibling of my grandmother, and they came with photos, mm -hmm. and 
So I'm going to share my screen. Um, usually for me, it's like whatever is my my newest photo is my favorite. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It is. Um, it's yeah. so delicate and I, I like the sepia tone. Um, this is um, the wife of my great uncle. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually came in um, a picture frame with the two of them. It was a double frame, small, um, mm -hmm. with her on one side and him on the other. Um, so if I go to um, his profile, mm -hmm. um, there I ha now have a much a nice close up of uh, of him, and um, and I told you I went down a rabbit hole this morning. <laughs> that was, you know, so big, and that was trying to identify this um, insignia on his soldier. Oh. Yeah, I knew that he had um, served during World War One in the British Royal Artillery um, in France, and so you know it's. A lot of Google searching, and, mm -hmm. and the thing that was confusing about this, the the bit at the bottom was it was curved, yeah. and it was and it was an abbreviation for Gloucestershire, but it oh, was wow. Gloc, you know, it was Glock or something. Yeah, right? there was no U that you know because they had to make it fit. Right. So that was really exciting. But you could zoom in close enough and read that. Yeah, well, not very well. It would took a lot of back and forth <laughs> between squinting at the picture as much mm. as I could blow it up, and then um, and then looking at things online. Mm. Um, so then I was looking at his profile and what I had done on it, so and he's, your, he's the one who's related. The yes, he's my gr he's my great uncle. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a research note. I'm not going to show you yet. I had a research note that said um, baptism have not yet found records of his baptism. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what my second cousin had? No way. Yes. Yes way. The baptismal <laughs> yes. certificate? So, so th this was a little card. I'm going to blow it up so you can see it. Yeah. Is it big enough? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Isn't it? I mean, first of all, beautiful yes second of all i mean you know the dates are so helpful baptized january 10th um in at uh, saint savior's church which mm -hmm. was where he was later married in cardiff okay. yeah. um and then he was confirmed um monday and i had to it's a good thing they put the monday because then yeah. I, to, I checked that the 14th was okay. a monday brisbane mm -hmm. Parish and yes, they had moved to Bristol by that point. And then his first communion was a few weeks later on Easter Sunday. Oh, no, that's interesting. We yeah. Confirmed before com first communion. Right, right. They were Episcopalian. Okay. So I, you know, that's, I can't say anything more than yeah. that. And then there was a, um, there was a second card that repeated the same information, but mm -hmm. very different looking. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I was able to take away my research note because you've got it solved. Because now I know. So um, my tip, usually I know my tips have to do with, um, mm -hmm. with navigating WikiTree, but mm -hmm. I think today is a more um, general genealogy tip of don't do your genealogy in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm kind of preaching to the choir, <laughs> Yeah. but if there's anyone out there watching who just thinks they can go it alone and, mm -hmm. you know, only trace your direct lines and, you know, not look at siblings and, and mm -hmm. aunts and uncles. I mean, sometimes those other lines have treasures like this. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. and it was so fascinating on some of the little photo cards that they showed mm -hmm. me on the back. It was a postcard. Oh, like, really? Yeah, so that you could, you know, you could mail it. That's wild. Like, here yeah. I am. Yeah. So Hillary has mentioned that she's found, she has something similar for her grandfather. Oh, right, right. Yes, because we've got the Welsh connection going there, Hillary. Nice. Yeah, that's right. Right. Uh, and Dee has also said something. Mm -hmm. Husband's great-grandfather's baptismal, originally saved by my mother-in-law. Beautiful doctor. They're a Catholic. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. 
Very good. And then lots of people are saying great find and whatnot. So yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. So exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So um, if we go on to the profiles of the week, um, 2023, who are you most closely connected to? So um, you'll see like all over the internet, there are, you know, end of year um, retrospectives and, um, and, and whatnot. And of course, one of the things we always, and genealogies are not the only ones, but uh, we are, of course, are very prone to this topic is talking about who have we lost this year. And so that's the theme for this, the profiles this week, starting with Sandra Day O'Connor, uh, who was apparently a distant cousin of mine as well. Um, and sh she passed away just the beginning of December this year. Uh, notable because she was the first female Supreme Court justice in the United States of America. Uh, and she was born on the 26th of March, 1930, in El Paso, Texas. Passed away beginning of December uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, daughter of Harry Alfred Day, a rancher, and Ada May Wilkie. Appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court by President Ronald Reagan and the first woman to ever hold that position. Uh, she grew up on her family's Lazy Bee Ranch near the Gila River, straddling the border between Arizona and New Mexico. Oh, interesting. But didn't it say she was born in Texas? She said she was born in El Paso, Texas. Interesting. So uh, one wonders uh, how close the interest at the border of Arizona and New Mexico does that also border Texas? Do the three of those states come to close together? Um, Betsy is quickly reading the questions of the week. So uh, maybe someone in the chat can inform me on that. I know they're all around the same area. What's the question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a geography question. So she um, she was born in Texas, in El Paso, Texas. Yeah. She grew up on her family's ranch, which is near, it was straddled the border between Arizona and New Mexico. So does Texas border those two states? Um, yes, yes. Um, but El Paso is very close to the Mexican border. So I, that's, oh yeah. Yeah. Butterfly says that El Paso I, is right across the border. I, from right. Oh. I mean, it's all, all roughly the same, but I don't, I don't think, I mean, Texas is massive. Oh yeah, I know. Te yeah. So <laughs> that's what I was thinking. If she's born in Texas, how is she up at the border between Arizona and New Mexico? Probably? Right. The piece I didn't, I was missing is where El Paso was in relation to the rest of Texas. So that right, was, right, yeah, <laughs> yes. And Chris, you're right. It's another episode <laughs> of the Canadian <laughs> learns about U.S. geography. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So, but I mean, you've got 50 states. I mean, two are easy. Yeah. There's Alaska and there's Hawaii floating out there. Yeah, but yeah. The rest are all. Yeah. You've only got 10 provinces to learn if you're trying to, you know, learn our our geography. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the same, the same land mass. Uh, well, not not quite, but still. I mean, Canada's. Oh yeah. Significantly it, sizable. Yes, it's it's larger in area, I think. You're, oh okay, yeah. Your provinces are way yeah. bigger than our states. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Anyways, uh, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, um, uh, you know, great woman and. Uh, um, uh, for you know, first female Supreme Court justice. That's very impressive. Uh, moving on, we have Jane Mallory Birkin, OBE, uh, born in England on the 14th of December. So she could have been, she could have been one of our December profiles uh, in Mary Le Bon in England, and then passed away on the 16th of July this year at the age of 76 in Paris, France. She was an English singer and an actress, and she married John Pendergast Barry in 1965. Her first film was in 66, a minor role in a film called Blow Up, directed by Michelangelo Anton Antonioni. Uh, and then she starred in a French film called Slogan with uh, Serge Gainsbourg. Um, and from there until 80, she had a personal working relationship with Gainsbourg. Um, they had three albums of songs, and then she lived mainly in France. And she had other performances in different films. Died in her home in Paris on the 16th of July. We have a few French uh, notables who are part of this, so that's quite neat. Uh, then we have Willem Philippe de Bie uh, from Ho Holland. He was born on the 17th of May in 1939 uh, in 
Susgravenhag, uh, Zoo to Holland. Um, and then he passed away on the 27th of March, again in Susgravenhag, Zoo to Holland, Netherlands. Uh, his biography is very short in English. Um, he was born in 1939, son of Hippolyta Philip de B, de B and Magdalena Sarabeta Safer. He passed away in 2023. But I had looked up his wiki tree, or not wiki tree, his Wikipedia entry, and he was part of a comedy duo. Um, let me just show that up. Uh, part of the, a comedy uh, team, uh, the Van Kooten and De B. Van Kooten and Debbie. Uh, so he had uh, his partners, Keith Van Kooten, uh, and the two of them were um, did a, a, a Dutch comedy duo, writer and singer. And uh, so very, um, very famous there. Uh, he died of Parkinson's disease, sadly, this March. And there's a there's a nice picture of him right there from his profile. And then we have Willie Christine King Ferris, uh, who is uh, the eldest sibling of Martin Luther King Jr. So her parents are Martin Luther King Sr. and uh, his wife, Alberta Christine Williams. And Willie Christine King Ferris is the, el the eldest so sibling of Martin Luther King Jr. She taught at Spelman College and is the author of several books as well as a public speaker. So she's there, and there she is right there. So just just as her uh, as her as her brother was, uh, of course, a famous and very influential uh, person. Um, she herself has also been very influential in in the teaching and working at Spelman College. She was a pa uh, faithful sister, a passionate faculty member, and beloved community advocate. She taught for fifty six years. At Spelman College, fifty-six years—that's a long time to be teaching anywhere or teaching at all, but in one place. And so she retired as a tenured professor in 2014. She was also, of course, an activist and an author, and amassed many accolades during her lifetime, including the Spelman's Founders Day True Blue Award in 2018. Um, and then it goes and talks about many other awards that she got: Teachers' Choice Awards, Humane Letters um, from her sorority, the Alpha part of a strong family legacy at Spelman. Um, so, and that little brief there was written by Spelman College, of course. Uh, anyways, uh, her niece was Reverend Bernice King, and she says, I love you and will miss you, Aunt Christine. Isn't that sweet? So there we go. Um, just Louis, Louis Fontaine was born in Marrakesh in Morocco. So this is very interesting. On the uh, 18th of August in 1933, uh, he was a Moroccan-born French professional footballer who played as a striker. He scored the most goals ever in a single edition of the FIFA World Cup with 13 goals in six matches in the 1958 FIFA World Cup tournament. So a soccer great. And, pa and passed away on the 20th of February, 2023, age 49, in Toulouse, France. So very neat. We don't often get people born in Marrakesh in our profiles of the week, so that's kind of cool. And there he is, Just Fontaine. Moving on, we have Marie-Françoise Gillot. Now, this, this per, uh, person is very notable, and... She <laughs> She she also liked uh, she also had a dalliance with notables. She was definitely attracted to notable people herself. So she's a French painter, a critic, and an author. But she was also the companion of painter Pablo Picasso, and between forty three and fifty three, and the mother of two of his children, Claude and Paloma. Paloma were both her children uh, with uh, Picasso. She wrote a book, Life with Picasso, several years after their separation. Then she got married to the uh, glassmaker, Luc Simon, from, and they were married from uh, 55 to 62. And then in 1970, she married Jonas Salk, the person who invented the polio vaccine. Like, that's amazing. Like, who'd have thought going from Pablo Picasso, famous artist, to famous scientist, Jonas Salk? Like, isn't that wild? That's 
really interesting. That is so meant- interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah. That, so that is just amazing. Um, anyways, I read it all in English. I don't need to read it again in French, but I, I could. But anyways, there we go. And there she is. So very interesting woman and uh, kudos. She, <laughs> yeah. Chris says she had a type. Her type was notable. So, but you mean I, everyone is notable in their own way. It's just the world doesn't always realize your notability. So you could say that, um, which is true. Now, next one, who, next uh, notable who passed away. We've already talked about uh, John Barry Humphreys, but uh, he was notable. Uh, born in Victoria, Australia, Hugh, and passed away on the 22nd of April uh, earlier this year at the age of 89 in Darlinghurst, New South Wales, Australia. Of course, most famous for his character, Dame Edna Everidge. And there's Dame Edna right there. Hello, possums. And uh, we talked a lot about him when he was the profile of the week uh, a while back. But uh, he uh, was well loved and uh, was you know, quite famous for all of his work that he had done. And again, this is a, a really well done profile with lots of links and everything. Um, voice work act, I don't know if I mentioned, we mentioned before the voice work he did. So the animated film, The Hobbit, The Unexpected Journey from 2012, I didn't remember him being in that, or in a, a new uh, animated movie about uh, Oz. So that's, I don't think we mentioned that the last time. Uh, so very interesting character and much beloved by many people. Heinz Alfred Kissinger, uh, also known as Henry Kissinger, uh, born in Bavaria, in Fort Bavaria, Germany in 1923, uh, his family left uh, Germany before the Second World War because of um, persecution of the Jews. Um, but he lived, he just passed away at the end of November, on the 29th of November, at the age of 100. That's great. Uh, in Kent, uh, not Kent, England, uh, in Litchfield County, Connecticut, United States. Of course, he's part of the United States history and has Jewish roots. Yeah. So they left in. 30, 1938, they fled Germany to avoid Nazi persecution. Um, interesting note here, his family was German Jewish and his great, great grandfather, Meyer Loeb, adopt, adopted Kissinger as his last name, his surname in 1817, taking it from the Bavarian spa town of Bad Kissingen. Um, so that's interesting um, because I think I read somewhere or heard somewhere that a, um, Surnames uh, that um, Jewish families didn't necessarily have surnames up until relatively recently, uh, genealogically speaking. So this might be one of those times. But someone can correct me in the chat if I'm wrong about that. Uh, he became a uh, U.S. citizen in 1943, graduated summa cum laude from Harvard, and of course played a prominent role in, in the United States foreign policy. Uh, assistant to the President for National Security Affairs and also Secretary of State, which of course is the role that many of us will remember him as having in, from 73 to 77. Uh, I didn't realize that he was part of the negotiating team for the ceasefire in Vietnam and received a 73, 1973 Nobel Peace Prize for that. But that's interesting. Henry Kissinger, end of November. Uh, Robert Montgomery Knight, uh, Bob the General Knight, basketball coach, uh, born the 25th of October 1940 in Massillon, uh, Stark County, Ohio, uh, and then at the age of 83, on the first day of November, All Saints Day, 2023, he passed away in Bloomington in Perry Township, Monroe, Indiana. Uh, so here he is. He was born in Hawaii. Nice sticker, sir. Uh, who's your... Um, okay, and uh, also a military veteran, served in the United States Army, and of course a notable college basketball coach, nicknamed The General. He won 902 NCAA Division I men's basketball games, and that was a record at the time of his retirement. Currently he ranks fifth all-time. I think we may have already profiled him as well earlier this year. Um, all-time coaching record, 902 to 371. So 
very impressive. His father worked for a railroad, his mother was a school teacher, and he began playing organized basketball when he was in high school. And then of course continued on to play in college and then eventually became coach. Look at that nice picture of him uh, and his mother. Look at that. <laughs> and then of course, the uh, typical coach's picture there. There we go. Moving on, we have Jesse Lester McReynolds. Jesse Lester McReynolds, born on the 9th of July, 1929 in Carfax, Wise County, Virginia. And he passed away the 23rd of June, 2023 at age of 93 in Gallatin, Sumner County in Tennessee. Uh, so he was an American bluegrass musician best known for his innovative cross-picking and split-string styles of mandolin playing. So we have a musician here. Excellent. Um, he and his brother uh, were a famous duo, and they played together. He, they followed in the footsteps of their grandfather, Charlie McReynolds, who was one of the first artists to record for RCA in Bristol, Virginia. Charlie was a fiddler, recorded as a member of the Bull Mountain Moonshiners at the famed 1927 Bristol Sessions. That's a great name for a group, the Bull Mountain Moonshiners. <laughs> they sound like a fun group. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I could be wrong, but I think this profile has Appalachia written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John Tyner's already beaten me to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so... Uh, his father was a coal miner, Claude, uh, who was a coal miner, was also a fiddler. And his mother played guitar, banjo, and harmonica, taught them to sing gospel songs in harmony. I mean, he was destined to be a musician. I mean, how could he do anything else? <laughs> but he didn't, he didn't actually start playing the mandolin, which is one of his, uh, was one of his primary uh, instruments, until 14. But sadly, because he got two legs broken in a car accident. <gasps> oh, no. But I mean, that'll keep you mo um, stationary for a bit. Yeah. So yeah. learning an in learning an instrument is a good way to distract yourself from that. Absolutely. But it'd be nicer to to learn an instrument because you choose to, and not because you're immobilized after an accident like that. Right. It's so interesting, though, how sometimes you have a life event mm -hmm. that just makes you go down one fork, and it inf influences the rest of your life. Yeah. In, in his case, fortunately, a good way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He had this, the musical talent that might not have been developed mm. if, if, you know, yeah. he had other choices of activity. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So in 52, he and his brother debuted on Capitol Records, their first major. They switched to a number of different labels, landed at Columbia in the end, and then they had a, their first single, The Flame of Love. I'm not familiar with any of their music. I was going to, if I had more time this morning, I was going to search some of that out. Um, but a uh, lot, there's a list of their hits there. So we could look those up. Cotton Mill Man, Diesel on My Tail, Paradise, and Are You Missing Me? <laughs> uh, their name, their band was called the Virginia Trio. And then there was the Virginia Boys. Um, but Zetla, his brother passed away before him. Look up this picture of him and his brother. Isn't that neat? <laughs> Yeah, you can see the resemblance. Yeah. 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 Um, both he and his brother battled cancer in two, 2002, even the same year. Uh, his fight was successful, but his brother's was not. So that's sad. And when his brother passed away, that uh, ended, their, ended their duet, their duo act, which had lasted 55 years together as a duo. Wow. Amazing, eh? Anyways, he still kept playing. Um, and did other things, uh, even ventured into rock music, huh. playing for the doors. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Isn't that wild? <laughs> That's a switch up, switch up. That's a bit of a switch, the doors album, the soft braid. Uh, I'm not um, a listener of the doors, so I'm not familiar with that. So, but mm -hmm. I have to give that a little listen. Anyways, and apparently he's a fourth cousin to Loretta Lynn and Crystal Gale. So. Neat. Hey, um, Greg, I looked yeah. up uh, our closest connections. Oh, yes. And you have a, a three-way tie for your oh. So 
Gordon Pinsent. Yeah, excellent. Francois Canadian. Gio. Gio. Okay. Yeah. And Sandra Day O'Connor are 22 degrees each of them. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I'm happy. Gordon is, of course, our, our, our Canadian here in the um, in the roundup. Mm -hmm. And Francois Gilo uh, being French, that doesn't seem right. But Sandra Day O'Connor, that's interesting. Yeah. She's my closest at 18. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Oh, look at someone else. Someone knows the Doors album. <laughs> All right, Jen. All right, Jen. And do you do you hear any mandolin in that? Do you do you recognize the song that he was playing? Is my question. Wow. Oh, and Vicky also says that's a great album. Hmm. Okay, well, we might have to go listen to that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Doors connoisseur either, so. No, no. Catch so we have Canadian Gordon Edward Pinsent, Companion of the Order of Canada. Um, born on the 12th of July in 1930 in Grand Falls, Newfoundland. Passed away at the age of 92 on the 25th of February this year, passed uh, in Toronto. So he's an award-winning Canadian actor, director, writer, um, son of Stephen Pinsent and Florence Cooper. He made an officer of the Order of Canada and then was promoted to Companion of Canada in the Order and was in, inducted in our Canadian Hall, Walk of Fame, 2007. He published a memoir, by the way, and a second memoir called Next. Interesting titles for memoirs. And then he passed away. Now, that's a very short profile, but he is he's a great actor. Um, yeah. He's done lots of neat, lots of stuff. And I mean, some of them are very Canadian. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if you guys would be familiar with a lot of them, but let me just whip over to his Wikipedia page uh, and see if... Uh, so he was part of the... Have you ever heard of the Red Green Show? No. Okay. Well... <laughs> That's a Canadian <laughs> show? It's a very Canadian show, okay. yeah. And it was, he was part of that. Um, there's a photo of it. So Red Green is this guy in the middle, uh -huh. and he's just sort of... a. I don't he's not a he's a do it do it yourselfer guy, you know. Yeah. Duct yep. tape is his favorite weapon in you can yeah. use it for all things. And uh anyways, they go to Possum Lodge and they talk about things and whatnot. Anyways, yeah. it's fun. Uh he's also was also the voice of Babar the Elephant. <gasps> You're familiar with that cartoon? Yes, that was my favorite child. I haven't seen the cartoon, but I had the books. Yeah. They were my uh, <laughs> favorite childhood stories. Yeah. From 89 to 2015, he was the voice Aww. of Babar the Elephant. Aww. So, um, but he did, uh, so in one movie, he did a movie called Away From Her, um, which is with Olivia, Olivia Dukakis, really well done movie. Mm -hmm. And there was another one, um, and the book was fantastic. Let's see, where is it here? The Shipping News. The book is incredible, and the movie is quite good too. And it's got, I think, it has Kevin Spacey, Julianne Moore, Judy Dinch. Anyways, that's I would recommend that one as well. So, uh, anyways, he was a great Canadian actor, um, and uh, quite liked. Him. So, and then our final profile of the week is, of course, the one that'll be the most interesting to pronounce. Toyota Shoichiro. Um, was born in Nagoya Shi in Echiken, and on the 17th of February 1925, the eldest son of Toyota Kiichiro, uh, the founder of the Toyota Motor Company, and uh, Ida Hatako. And his grandfather, Toyota Sakichi, um, founded the Toyota Automatic Loom Works. So, the Toyota, basically, the Toyota Car Company. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and he was, uh, he received so our profile person, uh, Shoichiro, um, after his father died, he became, he was employed by Toyota Motor as the director of the inspection department. So he starts off small, uh, he eventually becomes a manning director, managing director and executive mm -hmm. vice president. And then, uh, as, um, talks about how the Toyota Corolla was, um, imported in 68. I guess that was under part of his wing. Became president in uh, ninety in eighty one, and then uh, he served as the chairman uh, to ninety eight. And then when he stepped down as chairman, he became the honorary chairman from ninety nine till until his death. Hmm. He died from heart failure on oh he died from heart failure on Valentine's Day. Oh. 
Oh. Oh dear. That's, some, that's a sad irony, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. In 2023. But here he is. There's a picture of him there. Wins the Woodrow Wilson Award. Oh, hmm. That's interesting. Uh, there we go. And those are your profiles of the week. Wow. <laughs> very, very, very eclectic, of course. Interesting. Very, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I do enjoy when we have a theme, but yeah. it's also cool when they're. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing about the, this group was that um, and we had done Barry before, and I think we'd done the coach, um, mm -hmm. the general. Um, no, uh, what was the coach's name? Wasn't the, was it the general? What was the coach? Uh, his nickname. Uh, there he was. Yeah, the general. He was the general. I was trying to think what rank was it that they gave him as a coach? Yeah, I think we'd done those two before, but the rest of them I don't think we had covered. So that was uh, that was interesting. Huh. I was thinking, you know, like we also had lost Gordon Lightfoot, of course, yeah. another great Canadian. Yeah. Grew right. up in my hometown, my, my hometown. Um, Tina Turner, um, more recently, of course, um, uh, Matthew Perry, like lots of people. And the, the guy, the the captain from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Brooklyn Nine. -Nine. What Brooklyn, is Brooklyn? Brooklyn Nine-Nine, the, the comedy show. Oh, the, yes, um, yeah. Um, Andre, what's well, that's a very name? young cast. Robert, yeah. Oh goodness. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, we lost lots of people, but it yeah. was a really, really neat selection, nice mix that were chosen for this week's profile. And of course, we can't go through every, all, all of them, or else we'd never yeah. be done. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, uh, question of the week. Yeah. Well, actually, I was going to do. We have two ancestors oh, to God. celebrate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Super. Yep. Um, so let me go, um, go here. And, um, uh, so Yoke, Yoke's in the chat, right? Yes, she is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is one of her great grandmothers, Gear Twita, 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 I'm sorry. Gear Twita Lamertz, Okay. Um, yeah. Beautiful photograph. Nice. Yeah. Um, and so this is interesting. Um, Yoke writes, she celebrated her birthday on New Year's Eve, always with a house full of people. Imagine everyone's surprise when we found her birth certificate and she was born on December 30th, not the 31st. No, no. <laughs> Turns out her father thought it convenient to celebrate her birthday and New Year's <laughs> Eve at the same time as that tradition <laughs> stuck all her life. Oh, that's hilarious. So, um, yeah, there's some, I'm now I'm, I'm on her profile, right? Yeah, you are. And, I see your uh, profile. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some um, really lovely photos here. She even looks so young in this one. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. And um, then she worked as a, a housemaid before mm -hmm. she was married. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I was looking, I looked really quickly, but <clears throat> I couldn't see who a verte was i was oh sister daughter didn't seem to be a sister or daughter hmm but yeah love wow. the hats yes yes but they definitely are related like look at those those faces oh yeah so yeah close. definitely the eyes yeah mm -hmm. and i think oh yeah and this is the last uh last photo photo um there mm. they are on on a family outing oh neat <laughs> So, um, and then next I'll go back here to, uh, the G2G post. Um, I will be putting out the Jan celebrate your ancestors with a connection to January post later today. So mm -hmm. stay tuned, look at your anniversaries list for January. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Vic Thor, who I know is in the chat. Yes. Um, yes he is. About is, uh, Lowry great grandparents who died 365 days apart. Oh. So uh, Dora, great-grandma Dora, oh. died on Christmas Day, 1943, um, at 72. Mm -hmm. And his great-grandfather, uh, Louis, died on Christmas Eve, 1944, oh. at 71. Um, and 1944 was a leap year. A leap year, yes. So. Uh, yeah. So, um, and then... Um, we have a photo here. 
This was their their second marriage they had for both of them. Um, mm. He had been widowed and and she divorced and they they had two two sons mm -hmm. together. Um, so I, I really that's a really that's neat. Yeah, they do look happy. Mm. So. Very nice. Right. So. Um, okay, those are our ancestors. Get ready mm -hmm. for January. Mm -hmm. And question of the week. Okay. okay. Let me go over here. So our question of the week was, what improvements would you like to see on Wikitree in 2024? Mm -hmm. um, this is a great question. Um, it elicited, just on G2G alone, six pages of responses. And I, wow. I think off the top of my head, there are 20 responses on a page. So yes, that's, yes. A lot, that's a lot of ideas. Um, and, oh, I, and that's not to, you know, include what was said on Facebook or right. Instagram. Um, and I only had a chance to go through the first uh, page of comments. But I, I really um, encourage everybody to, to go and read it. Oh, I lost my share screen. Oh. Uh, I didn't touch it. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> nope, not pointing any fingers. <laughs> there we go. Can you see it now? No, not yet. Add to stage. Okay. There we there go. We go. Um, I just looked at the first page, and um, so, uh, I did read as much as I could on that first page. It's, it's you know, very mm -hmm. thoughtful, dense answers. Yes. And, um, I thought, you know, first of all, I, I was touched by people taking time to write mm -hmm. as much as they did because it shows how much the members of the community care about, mm -hmm. you know, our, our experience on Wikitree and, and our pursuit together to create one tree. Mm -hmm. um, and second of all, it was really um, a learning experience because sometimes someone would, uh, I could see myself doing this. Um, they had asked a question, could we do this? And it's a feature that already exists on Wikitree. Uh -huh. And so Steve Harris often was the one who jumped yeah. in and said, oh, did you know that you could do? Yes. Do and here's how you do it. Uh -huh. So um, here are a few that I highlighted from the first page. Um, so I, I, Greg, have you played with a family portrait app? Um, yes, I've. Okay. I've yeah. Okay. I, I, it's one of the tree apps, right? Yeah, I guess so. I have not. Okay. Yeah. So Yoke was um, was saying, um, if I have photos for a father and a son, mm -hmm. when I run the app with the son's wiki tree ID, it shows both IDs. But when I run it with the father's wiki tree ID, it does not show the son's photo. So yeah, it sounds it's, like it's one it's way. Ancestors. Yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, you know how we have an ancestors button and a descendants mm -hmm. button? It would be nice if it would run two ways. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, this is the first version of the, of the app that, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that he's put out and right. I'm sure that he's got ideas for um, improvements. For exactly. Him. Yeah. So Steve, it's, it's his app, uh, mm -hmm. I guess. And, um, he responded, it for, currently focuses on ancestors. It goes mm -hmm. up 10 steps from the starting profile and sideways one step from the starting profile. Uh, He's had its a request to expand and he'll work on it. Okay. So, thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Um, then so we're David Randall's question right now. Oh, what is that? That's the one. If I had one wish, Wikitree wish for 20, it'd be the to re exam and upgrade the options for entering names. Um, That's oh. uh, share this. Share. Okay. I there must. We go. Okay. Now I can see that, yolks. That was one of my later ones. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, sorry. No, that's okay. A, in my in my quest not to scroll, oh, I, yeah. have, I have six qu tabs okay. open. Okay. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Thank you for for flagging that, Greg. No problem. Um, yeah. So, but I basically just told you what what. Uh, Yoke asked and Steve responded. Um, the next one I thought was it's very simple, but a good idea. Um, a permanent place for a wish list. Like instead of asking this question, you know, once or twice a year, just have right. like maybe a free space page. Uh -huh. where, um, it would be a central place to ask for improvements, suggestions, voting. So I thought that was a good idea. NG Hill posted that. 
Um, okay. Um, and then somebody, let's see, who is this? Reagan Conley um, suggested a citation builder built right into the edit page um, mm -hmm. that would create industry standard citations. Um, so um, uh, Reagan acknowledged, you know, what a good job the browser extension does, mm -hmm. um, but mentioned that you sometimes have to tweak them, you know, just because of the nature of where it's coming from, um, and thought we could we could look at some of these already available models, mm -hmm. citation builder, scribber, grammarly. So that's I mean we're we're all about um, mm -hmm. solid citations. So that's a yes. good idea. yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Steve again says I have a small app built yes. for my own use, but I haven't published it yet because it needs some work. Perhaps I can work on that and integrate it within the browser extension. Mm -hmm. so, light bulb. <laughs> I like that. Emoji. Yeah, that's right. Um, then um, Margaret Meredith said uh, she'd like the ability to upload multiple photographs or documents at once. Mm -hmm. and easily tag them. I, I have sometimes wished for that. Yes. I, I think it would be interesting to know, like, really, would it be useful most of the time? Or just occasionally. <laughs> Some of the time, yeah. I know when I when I do want it, I really want it, but yeah, I don't know if it's most of the time. Well, I know like putting together our the free space page to help with um you know an app like the yeah. new app that I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I take screen lots of screenshots, you know, mm -hmm. and then I have to you have to upload them one at a time, and that's that's can is quite painful. Yeah. So that's a scenario where uploading multiple right. ones would be wonderful. Yeah. Even yeah. if it just labels them screenshot one, two, like sequentially, mm -hmm. yeah, um, would be fine. Right, right. You could always go back and edit those details or, or something like that. Sure. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, then moving on. Um, now there were uh, two, at least two people. There were two people on the first page mm -hmm. <laughs> who asked for an ability to sequence photos and images rather than have them appear in upload order. Yes. Um, along the side. And um, so um, there was a very lengthy response from um, Eric Weddington about um, using the coding where you can insert the photo into the biography text. Okay. And, and therefore, you would have control over right. the order in which the, you know, presuming that the person was reading through the biography, right. the presentation of the images. Right. Um, so uh, there, there's there's a lot of wisdom here. I didn't have. Right. Plus, if they use one of your very first tips of the week about mm -hmm. storing your photos on a free space page. Yes. And then only referring to them using that image mm -hmm. uh, in the bio, then you don't see the list on the side, which can sometimes be distracting anyways, and not in the order you want. You yes. Just, yeah, see it as presented as you've right. created it in the bio. Right, right. I mean, that's a, it, for sure. It's an extra step, but it it's it's nice. It gives <laughs> a nice sleek look to the profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was basically I was doing two on. It's quite a tutorial here. Oh um, wow! Look yeah, at that. <laughs> yeah, for various people. Uh, okay, so that was that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so definitely check that out. And then, um, okay, Wiki, for, so from Eric, again, um, Wikitree has a merge profile capability, but what about a split profile capability? Ooh. I thought that was interesting, you know, because sometimes you, you hmm. see one profile, and it's definitely two people, and could we? Oh. I worked, I spent a couple of weeks working on one of those a year oh. ago. It was a lot of work. Right. Uh, yeah. Yes, we can create a new profile and move over sources manually, but it would be nice to have a function that makes it easier to specify a different set of parents, perhaps an easy way to copy or split the biography and sources. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah. that's a good idea. I guess currently you just copy, you just do the whole copy of the, all of the biography. Mm -hmm. copy and, and then, and new. then manually extract for each. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And my last tab, 
Mm -hmm. uh, if I, this was the one you were looking at. Um, if I had one wiki, yes. David Randall, if I had one wiki tree wish for 2024, it would be that the wiki tree team re-examine and upgrade the options for entering names on profiles. Um, if it's a, if a non, a non Western uh, language. Um, and indeed like to see an option for displaying names in both the native script and the Latin script so that we could honor the individual's native culture while also keeping the profile accessible to the vast majority of Wikitree members who can only read Latin script. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, of course, many of you know, David is um, mm -hmm. a global project uh, leader mm -hmm. and which is going to be rolled out in two, in two days. Wow. First, That's and amazing. Uh, we'll be doing a. Um, I'm partnering up with David. We're going to do a, um, a live cast on January 8th to mm -hmm. uh, to unveil it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely. I know I have that issue with my um, my Taiwanese family, mm. uh, and um, I've just taken to inserting the characters within the biography. Um, okay. But but I noticed on the uh, Toyota. Yeah. Uh, bio how can can you pull yep. that up again sure can um, stop because i i saw yeah eight. his so name how, is is written there in the in the it's not is it the kanji i can't remember the name for it That's yeah kanji um a, can yeah. you go in can you go into edit mode i can and, edit and look okay. at there so and then there's a, that's a different uh what what kind of script? That's a net different type of script, right here. Uh, under yeah, you know the proper first two, the first two are are those are also Chinese characters as well. There, but oh. but the third line is specifically Japanese. Oh, oh, okay. Um, that's interesting. Hmm. Thank you, Yoke. You know who we need here? Sarah. Sarah knows all about this stuff. Does she? Yeah, she she learned some Japanese. Ah, okay. So, okay, so it looks so, like it's somewhat possible. Right. Yeah, I think it it, it is possible. And you just have um, I don't know if you need a special keyboard or you just need mm. to know the magic codes to type in to get those characters. What I do is I find it somewhere. <laughs> I get and copy a, and paste. <laughs> or a friend to to write it out yeah. for me, and then I copy it. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like you can use them, but what David does say, um, the order in which you present the name, right? Mm -hmm. The default way the name is presented, there's no tab, there's no button to choose that. Yeah. Right. So in your on your Ty Taiwanese family, do they uh, follow the same as um, Japanese and Chinese, where the last name last you, name is first? Yeah. Last name is the first one yeah. you said. The surname is the last is the first name. Is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah. I'm I'm glad when they put in like three generations of people in a, a profile like this because that confirms me. Yes, Toyota was actually the last name because that's yeah the, the yeah yeah thing, you know because uh, right. I'm I'm always wondering you know is it really in the correct order or is is the person writing the biography mm -hmm. you know using their western um bio to, yeah. you know but yeah. when you see at least two and possibly three names then you realize no they've done it right yeah <laughs> for their yeah. culture you so. know what is also confusing in mm -hmm. some families including my own um they would name all the sons with the same prefix and all the daughters with the same prefix so oh. my dad's brother my dad was Xianchang. And mm -hmm. then there was Shen Ming, Shen Zhong, Shen. They were all Shen something. So it would be oh. Ke Shen Zhong. And then the sisters were all Shu. So Ke Shu, Hua, Ke Shu, blah, blah, blah. Um, wow. So that also adds, not all families did that. And I think it's a more old fashioned thing, mm -hmm. but um, that's also tricky. Hmm. Sounds neat, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. Neat. Very cool. Wow, that you went through those questions very well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I, many of them, wow. I, I mean, I, as I said, disclaimer, I only did the first page and I think it's a really settle yeah. in with your afternoon beverage. Yes, and, there's a uh, lot of suggestions there. Read yeah. them and yeah. Uh, learn. Yeah. yeah, and if you have suggestions, it's not too late. You can add them as well. Sure. 
yeah. all of that will be taken into account. Um, and as Chris had mentioned there, I mean, they are planning some some changes to the way Wikitree looks this coming year. Right. They're, they're actually, uh, there's going to be a UI overhaul, so it's going to look a little fresher and whatnot. And uh, so very cool stuff yeah. to look forward to. Very nice. Sure. Um, while we were talking about the profiles of the week, uh, Azure gave us this link. And um, let me just put this uh, there. So there's actually a page of Wikitreeers that we've lost in 2023. Did you know that? I did. I read this. You would know that. Yeah, of course, Betsy would know. But not all of us um, actually realize that. But yes, the Wikitree community, of course, like every other community, has lost members. Um, and so Guy Con Con uh, Constantino was um, from the Quebecois project. And I remember, I think I've got a welcome message from him when I first mm -hmm. joined. And so that's sad that he's lost. Uh, and Shirley Dalton, uh, project leader, team leader. I don't think I ever met Shirley or dealt with her. But then there's a whole memorial gallery. gallery. Um, so that's nice. And, I'm, I'm really glad that we do that. That, that is very nice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so if we go to 2023, there's a gallery. Look at that with people's names and faces and stuff. Yeah. So anyways, so let me put the link to that in the chat as well for people to uh, uh, boom. There we go. And I guess it's helpful if I click on it too, right? <laughs> yeah. So you can see it. Um, anyways, I will stop scrolling through it so you can scroll through and appreciate all the people we lost. But um, we are still we are still here, and December is still here, and there are some things left left in December to do not much. Uh, there's a the roundup today and then tomorrow the weekend chat is going till tomorrow. I can tell you um, that the tonight uh, today at 12 noon will be the fifth day of Elfmas. So that uh, will go live at noon today. And tomorrow, the sixth day of Elfmas, the video will uh, be released or they will go live at 3 p.m. because our elf is from the West Coast. And he says he likes to sleep. His he's got a young family, and they really like to sleep in. So, <laughs> but then the next day, New Year's Day, is a very busy day for for me. I have to play for a mass, and it's my mother in law's ninety second birthday. So happy wow. birthday in advance to her. Yes. And we're hosting and celebrating. So we are having the Elfmas starts at nine a.m. on New yeah. Year's Day. Uh, so for any of the any of you who are not partying too hard on New Year's Eve or come from a different count time zone and 9 a.m. my time is, you know, middle of the afternoon, join us at 9 a.m. <laughs> the seventh and day of Elfmas. 9 a.m. 9 9 Eastern, right? 9 a.m. Eastern, yes. So I'm giving Eastern times, but yes, yes. you have to do right. the translation and whatnot. Yeah. But if you go to YouTube, YouTube will tell you the right time because yeah. Eowyn is an angel as well as an elf. And she has posted all of those uh, in advance on YouTube. So you can just go check that out there. Um, of course, lots of the month long challenges, ongoing events. Rock you is when will rock you end? Or did uh, it end? Tomorrow night at midnight. Tomorrow night at midnight. Yeah, it's wow. around, and uh, so we'll do the uh, the rock reveal on Thursday, January 11th. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm blank. There, there have been a lot of time. It's it's on the calendar. It's uh, on the calendar. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's midday, I think. Okay. Eastern time. But. You go, Rocky. I I don't know if the. Put I should there, put okay. out. I should put out. I'll find it. You'll find. Okay, that's okay. We will find it. And I don't know. Is there a post for January yet? For uh, what's for, happening around WikiTree in January? I don't think so. I don't think so yet, but you know, stay tuned. Stay tuned January 1st or 2nd. It'll show up eventually. Okay, um, the rock the rock presentation is January 11th at noon Eastern. Okay, January 11th noon. Okay. So, and there we go. And Azure has given us the social media. Wait a second. Am I in the right spot? 
24. There we are. Week of Sunday, December 31st. Here we are. Um, all the links for all the things that are happening. Um, uh, Power is the one name Tuesday for one name Tuesday is the, the name that we're going to be talking about. Colzine Castle in South Ayrshire. Mm. That's Scotland, right? It's got to be. I'm sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we have an Ask Alesh coming up on Wednesday because the first Wednesday of the month in January. So Alesh and I join us at 9 a.m. for that. Um, I'll have to make sure that the uh, elf cast doesn't conflict with that day. Um, and then uh, we have a Connectathon is the event that we're going to showcase on Thursday. Uh, Connection Finder McReynolds uh, was from the Friday Hall of Fame Spotlight. And then, of course, we'll have bingo. We're having a Friday bingo coming up. Ooh. That's exciting. And then we'll be back with the roundup. And the roundup will be all about the uh, reveal for the Secret Santa. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyways, we have and, a great week. Yes. Up. As long as we're, we're talking dates, um, yeah. I'll just put it out there. The new member Q&As via Zoom, we're going to switch the schedule. Uh, in 2024. Um, so it used to be the first Thursday of the month and the Sunday following that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just got a, I got a little hectic in that, mm -hmm. in that one uh, long week, longish weekend. So we're now going to do the second Thursday of each month and the last and the fourth Sunday of each month. So I've put out a G2G post already. The times are going to remain the same, um, but it's we're going to shift which Thursday and which Sunday we do. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And then people have, you know, they only have two weeks to wait from yeah. join yeah. to get to a, a new member. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Right. So. Excellent. Well, that's great. Well, I think, I think we've come to the end. <laughs> oh. And it's the this is the last uh, roundup of 2023, isn't it? Wow! Because next year it'll next week will be in January already. Yeah. So, um, and too bad Meg is not here, but I'm sure she's waving madly uh, on <laughs> her computer screen and waving to us all. Yeah, I and, know she. Is. Yeah, I know she is. Yes. And uh, thank you to everyone who's joined us, and um, have a great 2023. And um, I'll give you the last, the final word, Betsy. Okay. Well, happy <laughs> new year, everyone. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.